guys welcome back to the shop got a different kind of project this time I'm working on my boat some more and uh, decided to do an electronics upgrade so this uh, video will be how to do upgrade your boat electronics and how to pet your German Shepherd <laughs> of course this is Butchie and uh, looks like Brew Brew is sitting over there in the front of the cabinet. Anyway, uh, so the electronics in my boat are 10 years old. And uh, I've decided to upgrade them to basically the current generation of uh, marine navigation equipment. And... Some of my original equipment that's on the boat I can keep. It'll be compatible with the newer, um, newer equipment, but some of it will need to be replaced. So uh, in, in a few minutes, we'll, I'll sit down with you and draw a diagram of what the marine network on the boat looks like and what it is, is now and what it's going to be when we're done. Um, but I'm up here in the shop. I'm getting ready to go down to the boat to... Uh, do some more adjustments in order to uh, replace the main components of the navigation system I've got to do some preliminary some prep work in order to minimize the total system downtime I don't want to disable the boat uh, operation for an extended period of time <laughs> yeah look at him he's such a good boy so I'm doing some a minor adjustments to the network and so that when I get to do the replace the main components I'll have everything basically in place to hook, hook stuff up and when I draw a diagram here in a little bit I'll it'll all make more sense but what I've got here is uh, one of two new turn the box around well, they don't really give you a better picture than that, do they? Huh. Okay, so this is a... <laughs> Maybe it's on the other side, upside down. This is a Garmin uh, 12, 1242SXV GPS map 1242XSV. Alright, so this is a marine chart plotter it's a display screen that shows the nav the navigation chart and other information that you want displayed on it and i have a, another one identical to this sitting over on the other side of the shop which uh, will network with this and all the other components in the navigation system the compass the ec the weather receiver the xm radio the sonar, the radar, the VHF radio, the AIS system will all, um, depth finders, will all interface with this display. So it's called a multifunction display, MFD. And I'll have a pair of these. They'll be connected together, so they'll be both interchangeable. You can decide what you want to see on each one at the helm and getting everything networked requires uh, some configuration and so we're going to head down to the boat and i'm going to work on one of the preparation steps because not all of the current components will work with these new displays being as they're 10 years old uh, i have have to replace a couple of things uh, I will get stuff, new stuff installed, auxiliary pieces installed before I actually go in and replace these displays with the current displays. We'll head down to the boat. I'll show you what my current system looks like. Um, do a little bit of work on prep for replacing these displays. And then we'll come back up here and draw a diagram and maybe things will make a little more sense. Okay, we'll see you down at the boat in a minute.
here we are down on the boat. See this is the the helm station here. I'm going to go below and turn on the air conditioning. I have air conditioning here on the helm deck. I lowered the boat enough in the water so that the air conditioning system should work. Turned on the water pump for the air conditioning system. Make sure the air can the water is the boat has to be down in the water enough for the pump to pump seawater through the air conditioners. I hear the water flowing. Unlike your air conditioner in your house, boat air conditioners require seawater to cool them. Basically, uh, they're geothermal heat pumps. All right. And uh, on the helm here, I have the helm air conditioning pump, passenger side, helm side, air conditioners. They're actually heat pumps. And then I can turn on the DC panel and my helm DC power, my electronics systems. I don't need my autopilot turned on. So that energizes the helm electronics. And the rest of these switches are for AC loads, microwave, coffee maker, that's battery charger, the stove, the cabin air conditioners. There's two air conditioners here in the cabin, water heater. Yeah, so you have um, half the panels AC loads, the other half of the panels DC loads. All right, so as I mentioned, the project at hand is upgrading the marine electronics on uh, the boat and the reason for doing that is to keep them current uh, just like they're basically computers uh, I'm guessing probably some form of Unix system I'm sure it's a proprietary operating system, but I'm going to say there's some underlying uh, Unix characters, characteristics to the operating systems on these um, multifunction displays or chart plotters is a common term for them because they have a chart. All right, so see I've got two displays, two chart plotters or two multifunction displays got an instrument this is the autopilot I get my sunglasses out of here <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and energize the system this turns on this chart plotter the other chart plotter the NMEA or NEMA I call it NEMA NMEA National Marine Electronics Association 2000 or N most people call it the N2K network, um, the stereo, which is really my XM weather and audio receiver, my VHF radio, my radar, sonar, and then this instrument display comes on with this. There's a separate depth sounder here which displays there but I've got the sonar turned on so I'm not going to turn that on and I've got some cameras so as the two multifunction displays boot up you get the main menus showing me the depth of the water here that's below the below the keel of the boat and uh, I can show you we've got um, radar we got a radar display over here we can do a chart a navigation chart you can configure these two displays any way you want to the sonar 
is basically a fish finder. They're connected by basically an Ethernet cable, and several of the devices are on what is basically Ethernet network. Uses literally uses Ethernet cables and RJ45 uh, connectors. The cables are actually crossover cables too, so that's a little different from your normal uh, networking cables. I am going to change the networking protocol for the Compass from NMEA 0183 to NMEA 2000. The task uh, right now is to go ahead and start working on installing the new XM radio uh, cabling for the new receiver. So I'll have that all in place so when I go to replace the MFDs it'll be you know a quick switch out I just unplug one plug the other one in I've got another device a new heading sensor coming uh, and so we'll install that when that comes and that will get rid of the NMEA 0183 network requirement for the for the compass alright I'm gonna turn all this stuff off and we'll get get to the running the cables for the G, the XM radio. The XM radio receiver receives weather, the radar and weather information as well as audio. So I can listen to listen to the audio and have the weather displayed on my uh, on my chart. It helps uh, because it shows you where storm cells are and in the summer we get a lot here on the East Coast we get a lot of pop-up storms and it's helpful to see them on the on the screen as you're driving the boat you can tell whether there's going to be you know you're going to run into them or whether you need to avoid them how to avoid them that sort of thing I mean you could do it on your smartphone but having it on your display all the time is is you know a lot more convenient so that's the reason to do that you also get a lot of other information that you don't get on your smartphone. You get um, seawater temperature, wave height, you know, other weather data that's not available so easily, or at least in one place on your on your phone. Plus, if you're out of um, cell phone coverage range, which you might be on some larger bodies of water, it doesn't matter for the. Uh, system here on the boat because it's satellite based and not terrestrial tower based like your cell phone. Okay, I'm going to tear some stuff apart here. I've got to run the cable for the XM radio from behind this dash and this whole dash lifts forward and I'll show you that through behind this wall or bulkhead up through this radar or aluminum radar arch up to an antenna on top of the arch. And I'll show you the antenna that we're going to replace. If I could do it without blinding you, it's the one on the far right. It's the shorter of the two on the right to the right of the radar dome. So that will be the antenna that will wind up being replaced with a new one. And the cables will run up through, this is hollow aluminum arch run up. We'll take this. So we'll take this access panel off up here with these lights in it to um, get the cable, to help get the cable down here. And there's another access panel down here we can take off. All right, I've taken the two um, bolts out of the helm, so now you can see how the whole helm tilts backwards, and behind the helm is all of the electronics. Uh, fuse fuse blocks. This is X, the current XM radio box. 
the fish finder, the AIS, uh, a network, a network switch, and the rear of the two MFDs back here. So you can see there's quite a <laughs> quite a rat's nest of cabling here. I wouldn't advise that you do it exactly this way. Uh, I tried to get it as organized as, as I could, but it is a little bit challenging to reach back there because I have stairs here. It's and it's uh, you know a challenge to reach reach across. And I do wind up putting a step ladder in the stairway to reach over here. But all of the NMEA 183 connections are on these two um, terminal terminal blocks. And over the past 10 years that I've owned this boat, I have changed out several things. So I no longer, um, so there, there is some excess wiring in here, like this particular cable, you know, really should be removed. It's not being used for anything anymore. Um, there's another wire here, which is not being used. So there's a couple pieces of wiring in here that really um, should be removed. And when I get to the multifunction display replacement, um, then you know I'm likely to pull some of these other cables um, out. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that. But for right now, I need to get a cable. I've got the other access panels open. I've got the the panel where the VHF radio was. I took the whole surround out to give me the largest opening. I've taken the little hatch plate off of here and dropped the light fixture here which gives access to the cabling. Now I actually have a spare cable and this says to helm. I have this cable that goes all the way up to behind the dash and I put it in there when I wired the boat 10 years ago thinking I might use it for something in the future and in 10 years I haven't found anything to use it for There's a lot of stuff already up on the arch I guess I was thinking maybe a hailer a speaker that would connect to the radio where you could um, you know, use it basically as a megaphone or it's called a loud hailer or hailer. Never did do that because it would be right above your head and it would be awful loud. So I haven't, haven't found a need to do that. So I may use that wire if I can trace it back through the rest of the uh, pathway to pull the new cable through. So I'm hoping I'll be able to do that give it a shot. This is the Garmin GXM54 weather audio satellite receiver. And I've got a couple things in here. I've got the cable which we need to run got the actual antenna and a mount for the antenna the antenna will mount to and this is the connection box which goes behind the the dash and has the output as the marine the ethernet connector here and the connection to the to the, the antenna and then also has the audio connections, power, and RCA jacks for connection to your audio system, to your head unit. So this is the cable we need to pull. I'm looking at it. Looks like both ends are identical. So it doesn't matter which end we start with. It's uh, six meters. It's about 19 feet long. And I think it will be long enough uh, to reach. If it turns out not to be, then I can always mount the 
um, connection box behind the bulkhead over here. I have room for it, you know, or even you know, even back here. So I, I, I think I'd be able to, if I can't get it into the helm, I think I can still um, do it. All right, so I have determined this cable right here is the one that I found up in the arch hanging down right here. So I'm going to tape them together and attempt to uh, pull it through. I'm hoping that this fitting will will fit through the, the, the chase. All right, I've got the new cable taped, overlapped and taped to the, what I'm going to use as the pull cable. We're going to see if we can get this pulled through. I'm going to um, take some of the slack out of it right here. See it. Seems to have stopped. All right, I've made some progress. I've got uh, the new antenna cable up through the access opening here. It's actually light fixture opening. And I've got it pulled all the way down, all the way through the arch, down to this point here. And this is where the arch bolts to the uh, side of the boat. And there's a series of bolts here and here. And the wires, the cables that go up to the arch, go pass through a couple of small holes here. And I can't get that antenna connector through those holes. I've been trying for about half an hour, wiggling and pulling, and it's just not coming. So um, I'm going to have to resort to cutting an access hole here. In order to, in order to be able to get my hand in there to deal with getting that cable cable through, I've had problems with this this situation. I I had problems with it when I originally put the electronics in. I struggled for hours trying to fish cables up through here, and I've gotten to the point where there's so many cables, there's just no, it's just a struggle to get anything else through the small holes, and I can't even see. Up there, I can't. Um, I, know, I guess I could with a little mirror or something, but uh, it's just um, an issue. So I think I'm going to I can't even get my you know hand up in there really without removing, you know disassembling this this part of the boat. I'm not going to do. And this will also, and I will put an access hatch similar to what's here, only smaller, four inch diameter one. I'll cut a four inch hole and we'll put a, and I'll cover it up with a white screw in or clip in hatch like, like is here, like this access panel. And, and this will also make it a lot easier for me next time if I have to replace my radar or anything else up on the arch having the access here to be able to feed cables through will make a huge difference so um, I don't feel too bad about I always hate 
I always hate to cut another hole in the boat. Um, clearly you try to avoid cutting holes in the boat below the water line, but access panels, I, I, I mean, everything you do on the boat takes five times as long as you think it's going to take, uh, and it never works out the way you anticipate. So. Unless you work on boats for a living, and then I guess you, you're jaded to the point that you don't have any expectations and you're never disappointed. Uh, anyway, so it's, that's the way it is on a boat. It's, access is always tight. Everything's too close together. Not enough room. You know, they try to make it as compact as possible. And uh, when they built this boat, nobody anticipated the number and kind of electronics that would be installed on a boat. Uh, the size of the cables and, and that sort of stuff. And I have a lot of stuff on my radar arch. I have these lights and a lot of antennas. So anyway, this is going to actually make life a lot easier. So I'm going to cut this hole. I've taped this um, plastic cover to catch the metal filings. The radar arches the arch is aluminum and so this should I'm going to kind of do it in the middle here exact position is not critical I just want to be able to get my hand in there Okay, so there's what you can see. There's a lot of cables in there. Actually, had a pull string too, still there. So I believe this is the cable I'm, let's see if I can find, and here it is, this is the cable I'm working with right here.
There we go. That's what it took. All right. So I'll come back and put a cover plate over this. And that'll make it much easier to do future run wires up to the arch in the future. All right. So the next thing is to run it from here behind this bulkhead up to this opening, which should be easy, and then from there to behind the dash. And there is uh, another panel we'll need to take off to, to do that. Got all the excess wires tucked up in here. I need to make sure I get this oriented correctly. The lights are in order. Let's see. All right, red, white, and blue. I left enough slack in that new cable to reach the top of the one foot antenna pedestal up there. When I come back to actually install the antenna itself. Okay. Cut those lights out and move back to the pull in the cable. All right, I got the cable fed through here to the next point. Now I need to go inside, take down a panel. The light's on in here. So this panel, access through the corner here, I can reach the space uh, and grab the cable and push it behind the helm. There's a about a four inch diameter conduit that runs through this bulkhead here to behind the helm. This is the panel behind the helm. 
So it's packed full of cables. So I think the answer here is to cut another opening. Yep. Extend the drill bit a little bit. I can. There we go. I cut that small, the two inch hole here uh, so I could feed the cable through, and I was able to do that. see where it is right here okay so I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut the tape off of this and um, don't need the tape anymore and we don't need this don't need this duplex cable anymore use that to pull it so all right, so I'm set up now to replace this black box, the, this old XM weather audio weather receiver with the new one, which is so much smaller. It's here, and I believe most of the electronics have been you know, placed in the antenna itself. On the old one, the antenna is just an antenna, literally an antenna, and has a coaxial cable back to that black box. Here, it's a, I don't know, it looks like about a 10 pin, 10 conductor cable. So, this has obviously got a lot more in it than the old antenna does. So, so that pretty much wraps up the chore. For this morning, I wanted to get that cable here and accessible so that when I go to make the change out, I won't have to deal with pulling that cable. I will have to go back up to um, the top of the radar arch. I have my stepladder here with me and you know, undo the old antenna, push the wire up, pull the old wire down, push the new wire up, and make the connection and attach the the new receiver. I guess it's no longer called an antenna, it's, a it's actually a receiver. So, And then when I do that, I'll pull out this, this black box and replace the connections with um, the new. Fortunately, um, let's see, this has, this is the, this is the antenna connection so obviously I have a new cable for that this is the Ethernet and then this is the audio to the phono jacks which feed you know into this multi-conductor cable here which goes to the head unit in the cabin which I'll be able to use these connectors I won't need that so then this one is the power and I'll have to trace this power lead here back to the switch on the dash which says stereo that turns on that unit all right so we're basically finished down here in the boat i'm going to put that panel back up on the ceiling in the in the cabin and yeah, nothing exciting to see there and then uh, put the bolts back in the dash here there are two there are two basically thumb screws they go in so these keep the dash from moving
So let's talk about uh, marine networks, specifically the uh, one on my boat. So there are, at the heart of the network are the two multifunction displays and they're connected by Ethernet. Also on the network is an AIS, Automatic Identification System, black box, Automatic, automatic Identification System. This is a um, transmitter, receiver, or a transceiver. So it transmits and receives. This is mine is a class B. It's connected with Ethernet. There is a um, the XM weather audio is there's a switch. There's actually a switch. It's connected. And there's radar. Which goes into the switch. Ethernet switch. There's uh, I'm going to have to add something here probably. Then there's the uh, N2K or NMEA 2000 network and data is shared uh, across this Ethernet and so we'll call this N2K or it's NMEA National Marine Electronics Association 2000 so this network which is so Ethernet is regular twisted pair N2K is, I think it's five or six conductor, and it's basically a serial communications protocol. And on this network, there's a backbone. So this is connected, and this data is actually shared over. So N2K goes over this network as well, back and forth. So you only need one connection. You don't need to connect the other. So here I have my VHF radio and there's also over here trying to think of everything sonar and that comes into the switch as well I'm uh, okay, so these these devices share data across. This is all Ethernet up here, and 2K down here, and I'll add stuff to this in a minute. My current network has the uh, NMEA0183, which is the older network protocol, and each MFD had four, had two transmit and receive ports and two transmit only. So uh, on my, currently I have uh, off this one, the compass, and off of this uh, transducer. This is the depth gauge. So sonar gives you depth as well, so don't use them both at the same time, but most of the time I'm not using sonar, which is a fish finder, I'm using just the depth. So this is what I have here. So I need, I'm, in my new arrangement here, I have to replace this, and you just saw me run a new cable for the XM, and so that black box will be changed out and the antenna will be changed out. 
my sonar is fine, my radar is fine, my AIS is fine. I'm going to replace both of these MFDs and this transducer and this compass will come over to this network. So transducer and compass. Now, to be to be exactly correct, I'm not moving my compass to this network. I'm actually adding a heading sensor which which tells the network which way the boat is facing. I'm currently using my electronic compass for that information, but I'm going to keep the compass. I'm going to disconnect here and I will then use a new heading sensor instead of a compass. So it's a flux gate compass. Functionally it is a flux gate compass and it tells you sends data to the network and showing which way you're headed, though it doesn't have a display of any sort other than the numerical compass heading information on your on your multifunction display. So I'll get rid of this connection, this connection, and the reason getting rid of these connections, one is they're old technology, they're complicated to hook up, and the N2K network is now the standard so moving old devices, old, pro old communication protocols to the new communications protocol is just a wise thing to do. And the other reason is because the new MFDs, well these each had four NEMA 183 ports. The new ones only have one each. So I would, I would, have, I would be fine because I could put transducer on one, the compass on the other, but rather than doing that it, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade both of these to a N2K transducer and N2K heading heading sensor which will replace my connection that I have to the electronic compass right now. So that's what the marine network looks like so I'm reducing currently have three different protocols in effect and I will reduce that to just uh, two. Now actually off of this I have a GPS receiver. I will still have this GPS receiver um, but my new multifunction displays have sen um, highly sensitive GPS receivers built into them. My old ones do not. So they will each have a receiver in them. I will have another receiver here on the N2K network. I may disconnect this if I have interference or if there's no need to have it, but keep it as a backup in case, I guess, in case I need it. Don't, don't see any reason why I ever would. I do have one other uh, NMEA-183. And that, on, coming out of this one, and that's another GPS. I have this GPS switched um, separately from this one. So if this N2K network fails, I wouldn't have any GPS input to my multifunction displays. So I installed a redundant GPS over here off the NEMA 183 port and switched it provide power to it with a separate switch. So if this ever fails, I would have continue to have this. I'm saying NEMA, it's not, it's N-M-E-A. Uh, it's just easier to say NEMA than NEMEA. <laughs> so um, you'll hear people say NEMA, but NEMA is actually National Electric. It's a different organization, I think. I don't know if NEMA is a national Electric Manufacturers Association, Electrical Manufacturers Association. So that's actually a different organization. This is uh, Marine Electronics Association. So, okay, that's uh, that's the project. Replacing these two multifunction displays, replacing the XM, uh, keeping the sonar, radar, and AIS, eliminating. I won't need this anymore because I'll have two receivers here plus this one, so I don't need this as a redundant one. I will eliminating this NEMA 183 connection, going to a heading sensor here, 
uh, eliminating, converting that transducer to N2K by switching out the electronics on it so it'll come on to the N2K network. So it'll simplify uh, the network to just N2K. The challenge with the NEMA 183 is you have multicolor wires and you have to match up the transmit plus, transmit minus, receive plus, receive minus connectors between the two devices and you got to look up the pinout connection, the connections for the wires and match them up. And you know when you do it enough times you get used to doing it. It's not too terrible but for most people it's a pretty complicated process. Um, and connecting your VHF radio you used to have to do that and uh, to get position information to your radio uh, for safety purposes. Uh, the N2K connection is plug and play. It's a connector you put in, the network figures out who's on the network and they talk. It's nothing to it. So it's much simpler to deal with. Okay, that's what we're working on. We'll come back next time with uh, another task, probably to installing this heading sensor. We'll get that on the, if it will work on, the, I'm not sure it will work with my current displays, but we'll plug it into the N2K network and see if it works. And if it does, we can disconnect this compass. So getting one step closer to being able to replace these two MFTs. The transducer will also, I'm, I've ordered the parts to replace to convert that. So we'll get that converted. And when we have those two things converted and, you know, we'll be in a position to go ahead and swap out the MFDs because the rest of the network will then be, be compatible. And that will reduce the downtime on the vest, on the boat. I do have a boat trip planned later this month and I don't know whether I'm going to finish it before the boat trip or after the boat trip, but either way. Everything on, everything on this network works perfectly right now. I've got no issues, you know, other than these displays are 10 years old and a little slow to refresh. They also use a lot more power than the new displays. The charts on these displays are not as uh, current as the charts on the new displays, and there's no support anymore for updating these charts. Garmin has stopped supporting these displays. So that's another reason to go ahead and upgrade the displays so I can update the charts. I do carry paper charts on the boat. So I do have current charts on the boat in case, you know, there's a discrepancy. And going in unfamiliar places, I often pull the paper charts out to just check and check against what I'm seeing on my displays, especially if it's a complicated uh, entrance to a, a, you know, a tidal creek or a river or something I want to I have the charts handy. So probably more than you ever wanted to know about marine networking, but uh, it's my current project here in the shop. So I'm going to share, sh I'm sharing it with you. Hopefully you'll find it a little bit interesting. If you're familiar with boats, you, you may understand a lot of this. If you're not familiar with boats, this may be completely new uh, to you. And hopefully then it will be, will be a little bit interesting. Uh, it is uh, the newer networks, the N2K network simplifies things. Uh, the old NEMA 183 networking protocol and, you know, was a complicated thing to sort out. So, um, okay. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.